Tonight on the 31 Nights of Halloween Horror, he stalks and kills beautiful women. But don't worry, he only kills women that cheat on their husbands. So, you know, stay true to your husband, I guess. Tonight's movie, so sweet, so dead. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of The 31 Nights of Halloween Horror! Ha <laughs> ha Unleashed the fury of the worst apocalypse ever! Ah, yeah! All oh, right, man. Did I just take something or what? No, actually, no. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to bring forth more energy, dig deep within myself, and portray it out upon you all. Because I think I realized the last couple episodes I've been like a little bit, a uh, little bit lower on the energy scale. So tonight, tonight, episode number twenty nine. Oh my God. Almost there. Almost there. Coming off of last night's movie, the ever so awesome The Prowler. What a great movie. What a great movie. What a great movie. Honestly, everyone should see The Prowler. Um, you can see it on Tubi for free with stupid ads. You can see it on Vudu for free with stupid ads, but I recommend that you see it one way or another. And uh, so, anyways, moving on, moving on, moving on to tonight's episode. The return to the jello, the jello. I wanna, sometimes I, I wonder if it sounds like I'm saying jello, <laughs> but the, the return to the jello, the final of the jello slasher spree, because the last two episodes are going to be something different, something that uh, a friend of mine has pointed out that I kind of neglected. And it is true, though it's because I'm starting to run out of things that I actually have asked watching. Anyway, so, anyways, this movie tonight we, we are going to watch is called So Sweet, So Dead, otherwise known as The Slasher is a Sex Maniac, which is kind of an interesting title, um, but also isn't most slashers, no, <laughs> aren't a bunch of slashers sex maniacs, anyways, so what is So Sweet, So Dead about? Well, apparently there is a person who is killing women, uh, well-to-do high society women, women who are married to connected men, and they are also philandering, yes. And so this killer will kill them in a specific manner, slashing their throats, slicing their bodies, and then leaving a photographic evidence of their impropriety at the crime scene. So, of course, this is creating a big hullabaloo in the newspapers, and the police are, well, let's say under a lot of pressure to, uh, well, catch the killer before he kills and embarrasses again, because honestly, these, these people, they don't so much care that their wives are getting murdered. They care about the salacious scandal of them cheating on them, <laughs> even though these guys most likely are, you know, cheating on their wives, but apparently, you know, we're going to have to kill the, the women. So, of course, the head detective is trying to figure out, and we go through the red herring palooza that is all giallos and slashers, of course, until we are finally confronted with the reality that perhaps we have no idea who the killer is, and the killer is starting to get closer and closer to home, if you know what I mean. And so, of course, the mounting pressure on the police to stop the killing before, well, everyone gets, uh, 
bloodied one way or another. And I, what I mean bloodied is more like uh, you lose your job in disgrace because <laughs> the, the big wigs have had enough of your failures as a detective. Anyways, so let's get to the scores, shall we? Violence and gore, I am going to give this a one out of five. There is a bit of blood in this movie. Uh, however, most of what you see is aftermath. The killings are, of course, off-frame, off-screen, or, you know, just blocked off by, by certain elements of the scene. Like, the killer will have his back to the audience and will be stabbing what you would hope is the victim, but probably just stabbing air like this. And I just realized that that's going to be a meme. Anyways. <laughs> anyway, so... A one out of five, yeah, I know. Sometimes you just don't get the really good effort kills uh, in, in this movie. And honestly, I don't think the movie is about the kills more, um, more or less, if you know what I mean. Anyways, moving on to shock value, I'm going to give this a pathetic zero out of five. The movie has opportunity. And this is what's so frustrating about this movie to me is that there are moments where they could really, really up, up the, 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 the tension, up the, the adrenaline, and hit you with some really good one-two punches of fright. But it fails to do that. It's almost comical in certain aspects. How this guy who is in the giallo uniform for a murderer, which is a black trench coat, black pants, black gloves, black hat, black nylon face covering, and shiny metal knife. And yet, you know, he's chasing after, like, I think it's like the, the first kill we see on screen. He's chasing after this woman, and she's on the beach, and he's just, it's like, I don't know if it's supposed to be night and, you know, uh, a day for night shot, but it definitely looks like it's happening in the middle of the day. And it just looks so ridiculous, this guy running after her on the beach. And also the way he's running just looks like he's like, he's like running like a Scooby-Doo villain. And I'm like, what's going on? It's like, wait, wait, what am I watching here? Anyways, anyways. But there have been so many moments in this movie where it could have just been like sinister and scary and creepy. And yeah, I know uh, the music is a little that 70s giallo type of uh, somewhat misplaced, something a little more funky uh, type of thing, which usually works really well. And I think it works well in certain instances in this movie. But honestly, it, you know, it could have just done something better with the music and the sound design and the way that they set up um, the ambushes uh, would have been so much better. I mean, there's a scene in a bathroom where the woman's wiping the steam off of the, the mirror and, you know, they could have had a perfect he's behind her shot with music and, and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, you kind of see him behind her first and then moves and it just sort of kills all the ability to create these shocking moments. Um, so, yeah, zero out of five. Moving on to plot, I am actually going to give this a 3 out of 5 because I actually enjoyed the story of this movie quite a bit. And the, the, the final reveals, even though kind of ridiculous and a little bit out there in Giallo standards, this one flows pretty well and is pretty logical and doesn't go insane at the end. And honestly, the characters seem very realistic, especially the detective, um, faced with what was going on and, um, you know, his sort of um, realization that he's probably not as good of a detective as he was hoping he would be, especially in his personal life, and uh, what happens in the end really, I think, was fitting and was rather, you know, great. <laughs> so, uh, completely understood why it happened, how it happened, and that's something uh, impressive for a giallo. So anyways, three out of five. Moving on to acting, I am going to give this a two out of five. For the most part, it is your standard giallo fare uh, with the over melodramatic overacting women, but oh my god, this 
the, the voiceovers, because yeah, it's it, Italians with English voiceovers. Some of those, oh my God, especially minor characters are just cringe-worthily awful. I mean, there was a scene where there was a party inside a house and just the dialogue from some of the party goers was delivered in such horrific manner that it totally broke me out of the movie. And I'm just like, oh my God, what the hell? Is this the best they could have done? I mean, I guess maybe they had a budget of $1.50 or something. I don't know. Anyways, so two out of five. Moving on to nudity. This movie is a five out of five. Yes, this is basically the point of the movie here is, holy crap. I mean, scene one, bam. Yes, that's it. Just, boom. It's like, you know, like fade in, pan camera, a little bit to the right, boom. There it is. There it is. And uh, <laughs> it's there for quite a while, like just several scenes. It's almost like they had the timer going like, okay, it's been five minutes. We got to get some tits on the screen. Five minutes, five minute rule. I know it's probably been a little bit more than five minutes, but it is all over the place in this movie. And uh, I'm not complaining. It's Pretty nice. I mean, <laughs> they are the, uh, what do you would say, trophy wives for a reason, right? Anyway, so, five out of five. Moving on to enjoyment factor. I am going to give this one a three out of five. Um, it still had all the jello uh, pieces that I really love. And it really kind of like hits hits them uh, hard. I mean, you get the you get the guy in, in all black. He's he's chasing after the women. Uh, you have the detective trying to figure things out. You have all these red herrings going around. You're trying to make sense of it. And of course, you're also thinking in the back of your mind, it's probably extra B A from scene two, or something like that. And. Uh, <laughs> Kind of. Anyways, uh, you get the phone call from the killer warning off the uh, the the detective. But you get a little uh, bit of cat and mouse, uh, a little play here and there. Um, there is a wonderful trap sprung by the detective, which I really enjoyed. And uh, you know, you have you have a lot of the the look and feel of of the uh, the Jello uh, proper, which I really do enjoy, even if. It's not as violent as I want it to be. It's not as gory as I want it to be. And uh, even though one might say it's kind of slow in parts, I think that the the narrative is at least strong enough that it kept me interested uh, all the way through the end and was pleasantly surprised by the ending. Anyways, so I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. However, as my overall... Uh, impression of this movie is a two and a half out of five. Look, it hits the notes, and yeah, except maybe in the nudity department, it goes a little overboard. It doesn't really do anything super special. Um, there wasn't as wonderful an eye of uh, scenery, of set design. Um, there was not a a a, in, a awe-inspiring canvas uh, use of color. Uh, a lot of the stuff in this movie was very standard and straightforward, and so it didn't have a lot of the flair that I would love to see in in Giallo's. And like I said, it hits it hits all the stuff, but it just does it doesn't elevate itself any anything more than what it is. So in the end, it just becomes a standard. Uh, giallo. I mean, sometimes you need a little extra pizzazz in the kills, a little extra pizzazz in the gore to, to help, you know, elevate and set it aside from all the other ones out there. Sometimes you need um, the setting to be spectacular and have visual flair when it comes to the close-ups and the camera angles and the way you compose your shots. However, this one is pretty standard, straightforward, and because of that, it's it's average. It's it's average at best. Uh, two and a half out of five, which averages out to a two point four out of five. Oh my god! If they could have hit those shock moments, <laughs> uh, the scores would have been so much better. But uh, alas, they did not. But still, enjoyable watch in my opinion. So there you have it. So sweet. So dead. Otherwise known as the Slasher is a sex maniac. 
Which, honestly, when I think about it in the context of the movie, I don't know, like, how anyone would think that the slasher would be a sex maniac. I mean, there's no, like, evidence that uh, anything happened to these women um, during or after the murders. So it just seems like, um, you know, just a, just a stretch. Anyways, who, who would have thought that someone would name a movie a salacious title just to get people to get into the doors? Who would have thought? I don't know. Anyway, so <laughs> there you have it. Episode 29. Almost done. Please comment in the comment section below. What did you think? Did you see this movie? Have you not seen this movie? Tell me about it in the comment section. Rate, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you next time on The 31 Nights of Halloween Horror. And remember to stay scary, Internet. And also, um, you know, if, if, if your wife uh, is serving... Um, refreshments to a guest and your guest grabs wife by the uh by the kind of like this area i don't even like the upper wrist uh, arm area to and then kind of caress it down to grab the thing and she's all like <laughs> you know that might be a clue another clue would be like she's getting changed and she's like oh i'm gonna go to the beach and he's like oh alone and then all of a sudden from the same room that she was coming off is the same guy with a bunch of towels going, oh no, he's going to take me to the beach. You know what? Just going off on, off, like, off on a limb here. Just going off on a limb. I'm just, you know, thinking outside the box here. Just a moment. She might be cheating. I I don't know. I, she might be. I mean, she might be doing that guy. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't have proof. I'm just... I would think that that would be some sort of evidence uh, that you would pick up on. Um, plus the fact that she's not having sex with you anymore. Kind of also, you know, just saying. Just saying. Oh, yeah, so she has to get her hair done like every day. <gasps> I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Yeah.